All right, everybody, welcome back. Uh, in this video, we're going to go over how to make a simple mapping flight plan uh, for a quadcopter or for, for any multi rotor that's using Arducopter. So I've got Mission Planner open here on the flight data screen, the main screen. I'm going to go up here in the upper left and click on Flight Plan. So this is where all of our flight planning activities are going to take place. Um, the first thing to do, if you haven't already, is to set your home point location. So this is going to help you uh, plan more effectively. Um, you can click and drag this around just like any other waypoint. You can also right click and uh, select set home here and that will jump your, your home point anywhere on the map. Um, so from here we've got just some basic flight planning that we have to do um, with a with a multi-rotor it's really easy we don't have to worry about having the departure and approach patterns that we need for a fixed wing or even for a VTOL uh, because we just take off and land vertically so the simplest way to do this is to click this polygon button up in the upper left hand corner and draw a polygon of the area that we want to map. So I'm going to map this field. Okay. And once we have that polygon made, I'm going to right click, go down to Auto Waypoint, and Survey Grid. This is going to allow us to generate a grid that our copter is going to fly. And that's going to bring up this menu or this uh, new screen. And this is where we're going to customize how we want this grid to be. So uh, the first thing I do is check this advanced options box. Make sure you check that because then you can change some other uh, advanced options for the flight planning grid. Uh, the first thing we want to do is set our camera. In this case, I have it set to a Sony a6000 with a 16 millimeter lens, but in this drop down, you can see that there are lots and lots of options. Um, it's important that you set this because this is going to influence how much spacing there is between these flight lines. So I'm going to leave it with this a6000. We set our altitude here. Um, so higher allows you to cover more ground in the same amount of time but at a lower resolution so if I set this to 120 we can see down here that my ground resolution is 2.93 centimeters and my distance is 3.93 kilometers now if I make this 80 now it's 5.17 kilometers but I have a 1.95 centimeter uh, ground resolution so it's a trade-off select what you need for for what you're doing here I can change the angle of the uh, flight plan so right now it's oriented basically vertically um, but let's say for some reason I want to fly in the east-west direction maybe there's wind or some other consideration that makes me want to fly east to west if I want to do that, all I have to do is change that to 90, and now we're flying in an east-west direction. Camera top facing forward, this depends on your aircraft configuration, but this is generally true. You generally want to leave this box checked. This just means that um, the camera is oriented on the drone, so the top is facing the front. And this is important because obviously uh, the pictures are not square from a camera. So uh, Mission Planner needs to know whether the long or short axis of the picture is oriented along the flight path. And this, this checkbox tells it that. We can change the flying speed here. Um, this is uh, going to depend on your aircraft. My quadcopter flies at 10 meters per second. And so I'm going to change it to 10. This is actually not going to tell the drone to fly 10 meters per second unless I check this box. By default, the drone will fly at its maximum uh, navigation speed, which could be 10 or whatever. Um, but setting this will correct this flight time estimate. Uh, 
so it's not super important that this be set uh, to 10 unless you want it to fly slower so maybe I want this to fly at 5 meters per second then I can change that to 5 and check this box and now the drone will fly at 5 and then I can click this add takeoff and land waypoints button this is going to add the required takeoff and landing points for the drone uh, in order to be able to um, do a fully autonomous flight. Split into segments here can be useful if we know this flight is too long. So we see here 24 minutes. My drone can do that in one flight. But let's say this says 50 minutes. Then we could split this into two segments and now we're able to fly one, return, land, change batteries, and fly the second. But I'll leave this for with one. Under grid options, most of this we don't need to worry about. Uh, a few things that are interesting, one is cross grid. If we want a really high quality re uh, reconstruction, we can do a cross grid. Obviously this doubles your flight time, uh, doubles your flight distance, but um, it, it gives you better, res, uh, better reconstruction quality. Corridor is interesting. This allows you, for example, if you want to fly along a river or a road or uh, a power line right of way, you can uh, draw a line along that right of way and follow it using the corridor command. I'll make a video on that later. Uh, and you set the corridor width here. Um, and then, but for this flight, I'm not gonna change anything in here. The only thing that you would routinely change is to make sure that your overlap is high enough. I always set this to 80%. This is the spacing between pictures in a flight line. And then I set my side lap to 50%. This is the overlap between images in adjacent flight lines. So if I change this to 60, you'll see that these flight lines get closer together and if I change it back to 50, they get farther apart. And then under camera config, we can change the specific parameters of a camera. So for example, if you're flying a Sony a6000, but it has a uh, 19 millimeter lens, uh, you could change this to 19 and then save that new camera uh, so that you don't have to reset this every time. Um, but the, this just allows you to tweak it. It also allows you to set up a completely new camera if there's not one, uh, not, not one already in this drop-down menu. So I'll accept this. We have our flight plan. Now I've been planning for fixed wing and you see these big white dotted circles. These are called the waypoint radius. And this basically allows the aircraft to start turning uh, before it reaches the waypoint, which is important for a fixed wing because it needs to be able to turn smoothly. But for a multi-rotor, we want these to be smaller. Right now, down here, the waypoint radius is set to 90. I'm going to set this to 10 for a multi-rotor. And now it's going to fly all the way up to the waypoint and then turn. Uh, and the last thing to check, the last few things to check, one, is to make sure that we have our takeoff point here, which is good. Climbing to 30 degree, or uh, excuse me, 30 meters altitude. And then it's gonna fly to waypoint two, so that's good. And likewise, we have a landing at zero meters back here at our home point, so that's perfect. Um, now, we also need to check this. This is our waypoint type relative, absolute, or terrain. So relative means that it's gonna fly this prescribed altitude above the home point. So if you've flown a DJI Phantom, uh, this is what it does. You, if, you, if it says you're flying at 50 meters, that's 50 meters above you. And so this is good if you're flying in a relatively flat area. But if you're flying somewhere with a lot of hills, or other terrain, then I change this to terrain following. And this is actually going to use the Google Earth elevation data to follow the hills and things um, to make sure that you don't run into a mountain, for example. Um, it's not extremely accurate, 
So you don't want to use this at very low altitudes. You know, you don't want to go into the mountains and try to do terrain following at 20 meters. It's probably not going to work well. But if you're flying at 80, 100, 120 meters, this will keep you safely above the ground and roughly the same height over the ground all the time. So in this case, uh, this field is sloping and changes maybe 40 meters, 30 or 40 meters across here. So I'm going to leave this set to terrain and that's going to allow the drone to follow the terrain. And then the last thing I need to do before I go out and fly is I need to save this map and I need to save the terrain data because I need to have that terrain data saved when I do the flight so that the, it can upload to the drone. And to do that, I'm going to hold down the Alt key, click and drag, and I get this blue box. And I cover the area I want and then right click and go to Map Tool and then Prefetch. So this is going to save all the map data. I set this to 16. Um, any higher than that is excessive. You don't need super high resolution imagery for, for flight planning. So 16 is a good balance between uh, having enough image quality in the map and not spending too much time downloading map data. So I click OK and you can see those little pop-up boxes and then uh, everything is downloaded now. So now we're ready to go out and fly. Thanks for joining me and uh, we'll be back soon with another instructional video. If you have any questions about specific topics, feel free to leave a comment or uh, send us a message, send us an email, and uh, we'll be sure to answer it. Thanks.